Okay. Well, welcome. It's so good to see all of you tonight and to welcome those of you who are joining us at home. Um, tonight we are uh, going to be focusing on desire the gift, live the fruits of kindness. Um, one of the things about the word kindness uh, is m one of my favorite fall activities is to go to Eckert's and I love their shirts that say pick kindness. So we're going to pick some kindness tonight <laughs> as we invite Donna Mertz to share tonight. We'll learn a lot about that. And we, um, we also, uh, I think, posted on our website is also the beautiful sheets that Rita Boffman has uh, provided for us on this whole series on kindness. And I think uh, her intercessory prayer to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton on the fruit of kindness is a gem. So thank you, Rita, and I hope that you will look at that and access that. Um, so we'll begin tonight as we do all of these evenings of the Revival Revival with our prayer for the revival. And remember that as we're praying this, we're really desiring in our hearts for the whole archdiocese to be revived. <laughs> That, that, yes, we want our own hearts to be revived in, in and through the Holy Spirit, but we really are desiring for the whole archdiocese to receive, that's why we're calling it the Revive All Revival, we want everyone to receive and then beyond. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, you told us you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you. Father God, in Jesus' name, in humility, we ask that you bring glory to yourself by reviving us. We are suffering and have languished amidst the challenges of our times. So many don't know you or have turned away. So many don't praise you or give you thanks. Awaken us and lift us out of spiritual indifference and worldliness. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? You call each of us by name purify our hearts and minds, and fill us with a hunger for you and your word. Transform our minds and hearts. Pour out your spirit like a mighty flood into every heart, that we be filled with love and holy boldness in proclaiming you as the Lord of our lives. We pray that the Holy Spirit share with us the gift of himself, and that lives are changed by the presence of his gifts within them. May people rise up and use his gifts to set the earth on fire with your signs and wonders. Place the desire in our hearts to receive the gifts so that we may live the fruits. May these fruits of your spirit be manifest throughout the world. Revive us, O Lord. Your name be praised and glorified as the Lord of lords and the King of kings forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's stand and give some praise to the Lord. Tammy, thanks for leading us um, on our journey in kindness. Amen. Amen. So wherever you're at, whether you're in this room or whether you're at home, we invite you to stand. But if at any time you feel like you want to lay prostrate on the floor before the Lord in glory, go for it. If you would like to kneel, you know, go for it. And I, I think I'm just, you know, it, it may sound silly, but it's amazing that during praise and worship that we are we can use our whole bodies and everything that we are and everything that we have to, to worship the Lord. Um, but I also like to invite you as we sing these songs and that, that as we pray them, that as we look at the words and what we're singing, we realize 
what we're singing. So when, when we say, revive us, Lord, be ready for God to answer that prayer. When we say, Lord, purify my heart, be ready for God to answer that prayer. When we pray, sing, uh, set my life on fire, be ready for God to answer that prayer. Amen? All right, let's get going.
Lord God. We glorify you. We honor you. We worship you. We adore you, holy God. We lift your name on high, Lord. You are awesome. You are glorious. We need to glorify you.
Lord Jesus, you are great, and you are kind, and you are awesome, and you are glorious. And you pour yourself into each one of us. We can be gentle because you are gentle. We can be kind because you are kind. We can be loving because you are loving. We can only be patient because you are patient. So Holy God, we pray that you would continue to pour your Holy Spirit out to fill our lives, to revive us, to renew us, to restore us, so that we may spread the grace you have given us to all of those around us. We pray all this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Tammy. So we're so excited. Donna Mertz is here tonight. She is... No, most of you will be familiar with her because she is the trainer who does all the training for the Jonah ministry for us and does such a fabulous job besides being present at the Saturday night uh, Shepherd's Table Mass at Holy Redeemer where she is also very present and, uh, and all of our events. So Donna, come on up. We're going to pray over you. Just a simple prayer of infilling. So we just praise and thank you for your faithful servant, Lord. And as she shares her heart with us tonight, we just ask that you send your Holy Spirit, your powerful spirit, upon her anew. That you prepare our ears to hear the words that you have put in her heart to speak to us tonight about this beautiful fruit of kindness. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on her. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on her. Melt her, mold her, fill her. on her. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me. And um, our series deals with the fruits of the Holy Spirit as referred to in Galatians 5, 23, and 24, which, st- which says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. As we begin our presentation tonight, I'd like to um, use a quote from the book, Come Creator Spirit, by now Cardinal Renirio Cantalamesa. He wrote, the fruits of the spirit are the result of the cooperation of human freedom and grace. The fruits are produced when the garden of our liberty received the dew of the Holy Spirit. He continued that the fruits are the same for everyone. And the fruits of the spirit, he referred to our Christological fruit. That is, they are signs of the closest relations with Christ. He went on to say that Jesus said, those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, John 15, 15. 
And we just read that this last weekend in our mass. And my father is glorified by this, Jesus said. John 15, 8. And Conta La Mesa also noted that St. Thomas Aquinas had said that the fruits of the Spirit are acts. Hmm. Doing something. Many years ago, when I was in eighth grade, I remember that I was assigned to memorize and recite in front of the whole class a chapter from the Bible. I don't remember all the details. That was a long time ago. Okay. But I suppose we were all given the same chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. You know the one. So often used at weddings called the love chapter. Starting in verse 4, it says, love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, etc., etc. Now, over the years, my relationship with Jesus grew. That chapter became more meaningful to me and also at times convicting to me when I wasn't always so loving and kind. Maybe you can relate. But let's look at that chapter a little bit different way tonight. In the first letter of John, chapter 4, verse 16, we read that God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God, and God in him. So God is love. And if love is kind, I added up the variables and interpreted that, that God is kind. So love, it seems, is synonymous with the word kind. Hmm. But what is this word kind? There are several uses of the word kind in the dictionary, but the definition most relevant to what we're looking at tonight describes kind as a sympathetic or helpful nature. And being kind as a gesture of goodwill in a gracious manner or being a matter of courtesy. So therefore, kindness is a state of being kind. Now, I don't know about you, but I found those definitions fairly vague and not very helpful. And um, I always find it challenging when uh, dictionaries define words by using their same words and try to figure it out, out and try to define a concept so many of us use and take for granted as to what it means. It's kind of like we all know what it means. I found other explanations of kind and kindness a little more helpful. In his book, The Way of the Spirit, Using the Gifts, Showing the Fruits, by David Knight. He wrote, kindness comes from the word, Greek word, chestostis. Okay, so much for my Greek, I'm sorry. Okay, which means serviceable good. So doing good. Pope Francis in his book, The Joy of Love, described kindness as a person who shows goodness by deeds. And the Pope further wrote that kindness is love ever ready to be of assistance, and that this should be an enduring attitude in every Christian who lives by the Spirit. So it's an act of good done under the influence of the Holy Spirit. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, it says, And whatsoever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. 
So what in the world are we thanking God for when there are acts of kindness? Well, a number of things. Under the influence of the Spirit, we have the opportunity to be Christ, to be of Christ-like service to others, whether they appreciate it or not, whether they thank us or not, or whether they even know it or not. We have the opportunity to use our abilities, our time, talent, and treasure to meet others' needs. So we can plant seeds of faith and God's love in others as a result of our acts. And it's an opportunity for us to spread the good news of Jesus through our personal witness. I remember a couple in a prayer group I went to when I was first in the renewal. Their names were Ted and Pat. Ted was a seasonal worker. Uh, as I recall, he worked in some sort of construction trade. Uh, I'm not quite sure what anymore. But he would often be between jobs seasonally. And at times, they struggled financially. And that was often a prayer of Pat's heart at our prayer group. But every once in a while, a mystery person would drop off a bag of groceries on their front porch, maybe with a turkey or a ham for the holidays. And Pat would come back to prayer group and praise and thank God for the gift. That's kindness. I once was out of work myself. And friends from a purely professional women's organization called Women in Leadership, not related to any church affiliation whatsoever, sent me a card containing some money they thought would help me. That's kindness. There are many examples in the Bible of kindness. A notable example from the Old Testament is from the book of Ruth. You probably recall the story. Naomi and her husband and two sons moved from Bethlehem to Moab because of a famine. Her husband died, and then the two sons died, leaving her with two Moab daughter-in-laws. Following the, the famine, Naomi decided and wanted to return to her home and encouraged her daughters-in-law to remain in their own country so they could maybe one day remarry. Orpah chose to stay, but we know Ruth stayed with Naomi and served her with kindness as she returned to Bethlehem. We know the rest of the story, or check it out if you'd like. But Ruth's kindness to Naomi was seen by a Boaz, a distant relative, who offered kindness back to Ruth. We know that the, later the two married, gave birth to Obed, who was the father of Jesse, who was the father of King David, who was, as we know, the ancestor of Jesus. Think of it as an example of kindness upon kindness reflecting the love of God. Also in the Bible, Jesus demonstrated many examples of kindness. Here are just a few. There are stories of when Jesus was asked for healing by specific people the leper in Matthew 8, verses 1 through 4, the centurion for his servant in Matthew 8, 5 through 13, and the synagogue official on behalf of his daughter, Matthew 9, 18 through 26. There were also some acts of kindness for which he wasn't asked, such as for healing the paralytic, Mark 2, 1 through 2, 1 through 12. 
feeding the 4,000, Mark 8, 1 through 9, healing the man with the withered hand, Mark 3, 1 through 6, and raising the widow's dead son, Luke 7, 11 through 17. And of course, the ultimate gift of kindness Jesus gave was dying on the cross on our behalf to restore our relationship with the Father and to save us from our sins. Why did Jesus do any of these kindnesses? Maybe because he was asked to would be one explanation. Another reason might be to show God's love to his people or maybe because he was touched in his emotions or feelings upon recognizing the needs and the request of others. There could be many reasons, or all of these together, including being obedient to the Father. In fact, there are several times noted in scripture where we read of how Jesus was moved with pity and had compassion for those he met and their needs. So Jesus did kindnesses because he cared, and he still does. By the Holy Spirit, we also can be touched in our emotions when we see and know of others' needs. Why? Because we're transformed by God, and we are new creations in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 and 17. We too have been and maybe are currently people of needs. So we can relate. We too have been moved with empathy, sympathy, compassion and pity, or whatever you want to call it. We're moved in our spirits, our emotions, by the Holy Spirit to help others. But those tuggings of our hearts and stirring of our emotions, that's only part of the issue. It's acting on the awareness of needs to meet the needs of others that we recognize as prompted by the Holy Spirit. It's not for our personal gain, and it's not about us. We could respond to needs of others in a number of ways. Pretending like we didn't see the need so we don't have to stick our necks out, maybe because we don't want to get involved, don't have the time or money to deal with the need or whatever. We could see the need and hope and pray someone else will step up and take care of the, of the issues. Or we could recognize the need and being enlightened by the Holy Spirit, do what we can for the glory of God. In this last option, we might offer help or just pitch in and do something. We may not even wait to be asked. That might never happen anyway. But we could just help however we can. We can exercise kindness in many ways of service, holding open the door for another, carrying a lot of things, sharing a smile with someone who's missing their own, praying with someone who's hurting, cleaning up a mess you happen to see at church, helping set up chairs at a meeting, sharing a breakfast bar with someone begging at the stoplight, giving alms to the poor, our Father Bob's outreach, or dropping off a bag of groceries for someone. The options are infinite, but all is led by the Holy Spirit, doing everything for the glory of God with thanksgiving. When we are aware of a need, we are acting more Christ-like when we respond in obedience to the Holy Spirit to help out. And I believe when we are a blessing to others by showing kindness, somehow, sometime, 
we in turn will be blessed in our needs too. It means though that we have to be open and open in our hearts to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. It's not usually a coincidence when we see a need. I believe it may be God ordained, all for the glory of God. God is love, love is kind. He's calling us to be kind to each other and to show his love to a hurting, needing, needy world. And when we do, as it says in Proverbs 14, 31, kindness to the needy honors the creator. Let's pause for just a moment and think about where and how we can help others acting on the fruit of kindness. It may be using your time, talent, or treasures. And then, what can you do to be more attentive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit to help others? What would the Holy Spirit want you to know about sharing the fruit of kindness? Please think about that for just a moment. Let's take it to prayer. Father in heaven, we ask you to stir up more and more of the Holy Spirit within us. Holy Spirit, thank you for the gifts and the fruits. We want to be used by you to give glory to the Father. Teach us to be aware of your quiet voice within our hearts as you draw to our attention the needs of others and help us to be not so focused on ourselves that we miss your promptings. Then help us to be obedient to your call so that we can be instruments of the love of the Trinity to those in need. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Donna. That was really beautiful. Um, I think one of the things that um, is coming in my heart as you had us reflect um, is I want to make everybody aware that our two beautiful disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ interns will be um, here next week with us because it w they will be leaving uh, to go back to their community. And so um, I think that just as a renewal, um, we've all benefited by their presence over these few months that they have been with us. And, um, and maybe one of the where and how you can help others acting on the fruits of kindness, we could, you know, in this time period of the next week that we have left, whether it's uh, you can flood the Catholic Renewal uh, at ArchSTL uh, email and send a little message that we can um, bind together and put in, in a little card that we can give them next week um, from all of us. It's been just a great gift to have them with us over these months in ways in which they have ministered and the ways in which they have learned about ministry through 
the Catholic Renewal Center has just been a beautiful, growthful um, experience to watch. And, um, and it's with uh, our hearts and the acts of kindness that we can really give thanks for them being with us. So um, did anything hit any of your hearts as, as Donna gave us that time? Uh, you know, sometimes in our busy world, we're, we're hearing a lot of messages and we don't take that time to listen uh, to the Holy Spirit right now. Uh, anyone have anything that's present with us that wants to convey that? Or, um, or Jeff can be monitoring anything. If anybody on Facebook wants to uh, alert us to something, we're happy to hear f from you all as well. And Jeff can convey that for, for you here. Um, but I just wanted to give everyone that opportunity, first and foremost. Anything come to anyone's heart? Barb? That kindness, yeah, yeah. So Barb was saying, whenever we might see a contractor or a worker at a at a house next door, rather than turning away, actually give them that encounter with the kindness of Christ. There's a a, a, one, a woman um, who's been in the renewal for a long time uh, out in the St. Charles area. Once told me about um, how when she's at the gas station, she. Um, she just picks someone that's at the gas station who pulls up to fill up their car and says to them, I, I mean, so this is very true. She doesn't say, I want to offer to buy you gas. She says to them, um, can I be your Simon today? Like Simon of Cyrene. And so the person always is like, like can, I, can you be my Simon? And then it gives her this inroad to actually talk about Simon, who carried the cross for, for Jesus on the road to Calvary. And then, and then after she witnessed that, she'd say, and I'd like to be your Simon and pay for your gas today if you'd let me. So isn't that like just such, you know, she said she doesn't know what had her start doing that early on in, you know, in her days in the renewal, but she was just compelled and she has done that she's probably 90 now she still does that i mean literally i mean the last time i saw her she was 80 something so she's probably 90 now and she just still does that when she stops at a gas station which she she told me the last time she i saw her she was like isn't very frequently <laughs> but when she does stop she she asks like can i be your simon and I, and I like how you kept pausing and saying, and that's kindness, because that is. That's the act, of, uh, an act of kindness. So you want to finish us out, Tammy, with, uh, you want me to go to a particular song? We could shout a little bit. Oh, like, let's shout a little. Let's shout a little bit. interesting as I think about it. we've heard it both on like I know Joy FM here in this area and, and I've actually heard it all around the country where people someone starts out and they pay for the at Starbucks or McDonald's or wherever they pay for the person ahead of them and and there was like one one day I think that it went on for like 30 people and it's just amazing how a simple act of kindness is contagious Let's stand. Now, we're going to sing Shout to the Lord. And, you know, I think I've said this before, at least especially with some of the people in this room. I, I have a hard time when, I mean, I love this song, but the first time I ever heard it, it was so very gentle and so very tender. And so we were singing Shout to the Lord. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't shout that way. <laughs> so let's truly, let's just raise a ruckus. Let's shout as loud as you can. 
for the glory of God. Amen. My Jesus, my I think that um, as we um, leave tonight, first I was, it was made aware that I said um, that the Holy Redeemer Mass, and I meant we just had it at Holy Redeemer so, for so long. Uh, that Mass is now presently at St. Elizabeth, St. Raymond, St. Elizabeth, over off of Sappington Road, um, every Saturday night, 7.30. So we hope that you uh, join us, and then especially for the Pentecost Vigil Mass this year, that will start at 7 p.m., uh, so unlike our every other Saturday evening charismatic mass, the, the Pentecost Vigil Mass will be at 7. Um, so I want to challenge everybody. I want to challenge everybody that as we um, leave and we have time uh, over this week before we come back for Gary Whitlock's <laughs> sharing on Desire the Gift, Live the Fruit of... Patience, <laughs> um, which we've been waiting so long for, right? <laughs> anyway, um, I want us to really be thinking um, in terms of what Donna shared with us tonight about listening to the prompting 
of the Holy Spirit for the act of kindness that you're being called to, right? You know, so that story about that woman in St. Charles, that's what she was called to. She felt that prompting from the Holy Spirit and has carried that out. We each have one of those. We each have ways in which we're called through the Holy Spirit to act on really showing his presence through the fruit of kindness. So, um, so just think about that this week and, uh, and maybe be ready to share what the Holy Spirit did in you, whether you want to share it next week when we gather or you want to send us a message. I think it's really good if we could have some uh, response to the ways in which these evenings are fortifying us and prompting us to act. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, have a great evening. Um, And Monsignor, maybe you want to just, since you're here in the room, can you give us a blessing? You want to come up so people can hear you? (laughs) Can you you come up? Thank you. So we'll have Monsignor give all those in the room a blessing. And I know that God is also the author of technology. And so that blessing is coming to all of you who are watching uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. So thank you, Monsignor. So our good and gracious God has always kind to us with many blessings in our Catholic tradition, so we pray. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit fall afresh upon each and every one of you here, each and every one of us, that we may be a blessing to those we meet as we leave here. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.